here today. Uh, Senator Laval and I are glad to, uh, to join together today to talk about uh, a specific legislation that we passed with regard to green buildings that really now provides options uh, for local governments with regard to uh, a, a tax exemption, a property tax exemption for uh, lead certified buildings. And uh, we're joined today not just by, uh, it's just not the Senator and I, but our county legislators, Ed Romain and Jay Schneiderman, and amongst, and amongst our elected officials, also Anna Throne Halls from the town of Southampton, uh, uh, Ron Becerra from the Rensenburg Spion School District, and uh, I think we have uh, a host of people here from uh, that are involved with the U.S. Green Buildings, people that are involved here also with the Peconic Institute, and uh, I want to thank all of you for being here today, and uh, thank you. The, the legislation almost just blew away there, so. Uh, it's blowing in the wind. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to just briefly take a little bit of time to, to talk about what the legislation does, and that is, uh, again, I should point out that uh, uh, kind of unique for Albany, this was legislation that was unanimously adopted in the Assembly, uh, unanimously adopted in the State Senate, uh, something that doesn't happen very often. But the, at the heart of this legislation is the fact that it is a local option. Uh, we hear from our local governments all the time, and rightfully so, about unfunded mandates and Albany placing unfunded mandates on local governments or school districts. This is a local option. This is something that local governments can decide whether they want to do it or not. And involved, uh, eligible for this program are cities, towns, villages, and school districts. And as I say, by local option, which means that in the case of local governments, uh, they would have to adopt, after a public hearing, a local law. And in the case of a school district, uh, the, after a public hearing, they would have to adopt a resolution. Um, this property tax exemption uh, appro applies to new construction and reconstruction that is LEED certified. Or if the local government can also accept equivalent programs. Uh, it's not just the LEED program, but those other programs that are equivalent uh, but in the case of LEED, if it's platinum, gold, or silver, uh, construction has to be initiated after January 1st of 2013. And uh, in the handouts that I provided, uh, the, uh, the exemption levels are there. Obviously, if it's a platinum building, there are greater exemptions than for gold. Gold is greater than for silver. Uh, and the exemptions can be up to, for a 10-year period. For platinum, it's up to a 10-year period. Um, Local government, this is important also because local governments also have uh, some flexibility with regard to this. And under a chapter amendment that the senator and I negotiated with, uh, with the governor, uh, local governments or the school districts can, can place a cap on the amount of assessed value. So this allows school districts to look at their own fiscal situation, their own tax base, and then make decisions as to how, how, how high up on, on a cap or uh, how high up on the assessed value they want to exemption applies to the increase in assessed value that comes from the new construction or reconstruction. So we're not taking any existing tax base uh, off, the, off the tax rolls. This is about construction. Uh, value of the construction must exceed uh, $10,000. And importantly, for the enforcement people, it has to be documented by a building firm. Uh, so in essence, what the legislation does is that it allows local governments or school districts to, to act to institute this uh, and to provide uh, the, the tax exemption, and uh, you know we think that's important for several reasons. And you know we're here today, and we're encouraged to see county officials, town officials, school district officials here to part are, that are participating, because we think first of all uh, this helps to protect and promote the environment by uh, promoting the construction of green buildings, which is good for our communities, but also. This incentive, I think, will also promote construction and promote jobs in our community. And I think it's that combination of things that make this, uh, this incentive very, very important. We're here today because Senator Laval and I have worked together uh, to provide a draft, and it's in the packet, a draft local laws that, that counties, uh, towns, or villages can use, and a resolution that school districts can use. Um, to go forward and, and to provide this local option, you know, we certainly are in favor. We're promoting this, and we hope that our local governments uh, will, will follow suit 
we know every district is, or every local government, their circumstances and situations are different, uh, and they, they will have to assess it in, in, the, uh, in, in the terms of uh, really you know, what their, their budget is like, what their tax base is like. But we think this is important. Uh, I think it's one of the most important environmental pieces of legislation uh, that the Senator I have sponsored probably since the time of uh, the Central Pine Barrens and also the, uh, the Community Preservation Fund. So we're happy to kick it off today. Uh, it's, it's our intention to, to go to local town boards and village boards and school district uh, school boards uh, to talk about this program and, and hopefully uh, get it off the ground here locally on the East End. So on that note, I'm, I'd like to turn it over to Senator Laval to say a few words.